Welcome to Hoff Academy. Today I'm sitting here with Nadine Leopold, who's a gorgeous model mostly known for her work with Victoria's Secret, and now she's about to release her own podcast. Welcome, Nadine. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. And tell us about your new podcast. That must be so exciting. Um, yeah, it's really exciting because um, I think we're all in a very different time right now where models are talking more openly about all their experiences as models and I feel like over all the years I've met so many interesting people and I just thought there's so much more to every girl than you know just for example Instagram so I thought let's go behind the scenes and go a bit deeper so I am working on a podcast right now where I'll just be asking my friends about their experiences if it's just life or personal or you know, if it's modeling, so it will be very interesting, I hope. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, I'm definitely going to listen to it. <laughs> and I hope I'm going to be one of your guests. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you said that now modeling became different and it's a little bit more than just being beautiful and it's more about your personality and we can talk more openly about many things. But what it was like when you just started? Modeling was so different when I started. I was 14 when I was scouted, and um, I grew up in a very small village, village town. It was 8,000 people, which is very small compared wow. to New York or anywhere else. And um, yeah, I mean, when I started, we, I didn't have internet on my phone. It wasn't a normal thing. So I remember running around from casting to casting, looking on like a proper paper map. Yes, <laughs> it's <too>. very different. <laughs> Me too, actually. And also, Instagram didn't exist, so I feel like you had to... It was a lot harder to get to go to castings and to make yourself known. And, um, yeah, it was a very different time than it is now. Did you start from New York? Was it the first time? Um, time? I was working in... I started in Austria, and I just thought it would be a nice thing on the side next to school. And then one of my first shoots ended up getting picked up by an American magazine. And then I was signed by IMG Models Worldwide, wow, that's which huge. was incredible back then and yeah, really it's, unexpected. It's still incredible now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, I mean, for me, I never even knew that modeling could be a full-time job. So once I got signed by IMG, they wanted me to travel everywhere in Europe. I was too young to go to America and my parents were too scared because it was too far. So I started out in... Spain and Milan and London. It was like it was all over the place in Europe. Do you remember the first time when you traveled alone for a job? It wasn't just my first time traveling alone for a job. I've never been on planes before. Like, Me too. <laughs> my family, we would drive on vacations. We went camping and stuff like that. So it was a, it was very challenging going to an airport, figuring out how to get your flight, being completely on your own. I was 14 and a half. So I also felt a bit like a child and also I couldn't afford to have a phone where I could just call my mom whenever I wanted. I had a prepaid phone so I knew I had five wow. minutes to talk to my mom otherwise I would run out of my money on the phone yeah. so it was really really scary. I remember those cars too. Yes and yeah. I mean I don't know but my English was so bad as well. So it's well like yeah it's, it's tough. I mean 14 and a half is a baby. Yeah it was really really it was really crazy and unexpected. Do you remember when you first moved out completely from your home? Which city was it and was it a model apartment? I actually, I was really 
very, very lucky, and I never had to stay in model apartments until I moved to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anyone who's heard about them, the rumors are all true. <laughs> it's literally exactly what people describe them to be. So, hell. <laughs> hell, exactly. So I was really lucky because most of my jobs, they were just... I just had to get into a car, go to the airport, got picked up, and I stayed in a normal hotel. Yeah. Not nice hotels, but like... <laughs> I had a place to stay without sharing it with six other girls, yeah. which was quite a luxury. But um, I, I didn't, I don't know when I probably moved out because I feel like I, once I turned 15, um, I think one of my f- big clients was H&M at the time, so that caused a lot of attention. So I yeah. started booking a lot of bigger jobs, and therefore I had to basically spend a lot of on-stay time. In different places so I think I was like basically moving out from home around 16 to 17 and once I turned 17 I fully moved to Berlin mm-hmm. um, because I didn't really have to be based in a specific city as long yeah. as there's an airport I could live right where I wanted yeah and Berlin was just a really fun city back in the day and I, I don't know why but it just it sounded so, great so I moved to Berlin when I was 17 so you you felt good there Yeah, I felt good. It was very fun. It was very challenging because I think also with 17, I felt so much older. I felt like an adult and suddenly you have rent to pay. I have phone bills. I had to, at that time, I already had to pay taxes. So I had to learn how to pay taxes in different countries. Did anyone help you with that? No, it's my parents had full time jobs and also my parents, they didn't really travel a lot. So they had no experience in that. They They didn't really know how to help me. So I just had to figure it out by asking friends that lived in the cities that I lived in. It was, it was really, I I have no idea how I did it thinking back Yeah, so you basically had to deal with the contracts, with the tax stuff, with apartment, paying bills, which you've never done before by yourself. Totally. And if you have all my friends from school, they were, you know, they were just figuring out where to study and they were still living at home. So I couldn't really (laughs) speak to anyone. Like you just have to figure it out by yourself. Yeah, I I can totally relate to that. (laughs) Yeah, my parents as well. Yeah. Same situation. They were staying at home, didn't speak English. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't really help me with any of that stuff. But did agency help you with that or were they involved anyhow with all dealing with all this? I have to say, I had, again, in that, comparing it to some of my friends' experiences, I always had really, really caring agents. They were pretty tough when I was younger, because obviously when you're the new young girl and you're working a lot, they obviously try to push you to be better and do more. So they were pretty hard on me, but they were always looking out for me. So I was really lucky. Were they were they pushing you to lose weight, gain weight? Oh yeah. Like I mean, when I was wow. when I started modeling, I remember in school I was bullied for being too tall and skinny, and then you come into the modeling industry and suddenly <laughs> you're not skinny enough, or <laughs> suddenly they point out all these things about you on your body that you didn't even notice before. You wouldn't before. think about. No, absolutely true. I remember. I remember when I was starting. I was actually trying to gain weight when I yeah. was at school because because everybody was body shaming me exactly. for being so tall and skinny, and my nickname was ostrich because oh of that. God. And finally, I was like, "Yay! I'm gaining a little bit of weight. Yeah. I'm getting more feminine." And then I start modeling. They're like, "No, you have to lose weight." Yeah, it's like, we it's don't like, want damn. you to be feminine. <laughs> It's yeah. really tricky. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot of pressure and it's very confusing too because I think when you're in your teenage years, your body's changing almost lot, weekly. Yeah. So you can't really, you have no control over your body. Yeah, that's so true. But did modeling change your self esteem? The better the jobs were and the more attention you got, the more insecure it made me because it made me feel like in my personal life, I had to look. A certain way because I thought people expect me to look like at that time it's like you they expect you to look like that kind of model yeah. right so it's like if I were in a bikini I would constantly think about oh my god do I look the way people think I'm looking um should I have skinnier legs should I have like should I have more abs and it's like it's very stressful and it's 
it actually makes you a lot more insecure, I think. And yeah, I guess you're trying to fit in other people's expectations. Exactly. And, yeah. and also when you're really young and you don't have a lot of people around you that you can share your experiences with, it gets very lonely. And I had no idea about any of this because obviously back then when Instagram wasn't around, people weren't speaking about modeling. No. And it's just as everyone's like, oh my God, it's a jackpot. Oh my God, it's, it's the best thing that happened to you. You just have to go for it. There's yeah. no one warning you about what comes with the job. Yeah, it's not going to be as glamorous as no, you think. No, <laughs> totally. It's definitely not as glamorous as I thought. Like, it is in its own way, but I think it becomes more glamorous the older you get and the more you understand the industry. I think in the beginning, it's it's very it's a, it's a very tough job, actually. Yeah, it's a lot of, like basic and practical stuff which you don't think about and the glamour disappears somewhere exactly exactly <laughs> yeah but what is what is the favorite thing about modeling for you um i think my favorite thing about modeling was i guess when you grow up in a really small town i i was obsessed with fashion and for me i could only look at it on magazines and just being suddenly in the world where you shoot for editorials and suddenly you get to wear like new season designers or any designer at all for yeah. me to just be so close to that world that I just seen in magazines was so exciting and yeah. traveling the world I mean even I remember like when I booked my first big job it was um I think it was the mango fragrance campaign and I was I was probably 17 at the time and that was the first time they also like organized a driver I got a suite to stay in and I just it, for me it felt like the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, you were so, treated like yeah, a princess. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like an, any girl's dream. Yeah, and it, it, that is that happens when you're modeling. Not all the time, but it can happen. So that, yeah. I loved all the glamorous stuff around modeling. Yeah, but unfortunately, there is a dark side to it as oh, well. My, yeah. You always speak openly about eating disorders you have been through on your social media and I think it's very nice that you share with the young people because a lot of them look up to you as a great successful model, beautiful girl and can you please tell us about it? I was always more or less ashamed about having an eating disorder because it's something that it just felt very stereotypical and I felt like if I talk about it people won't understand because I think the job of a model is very misunderstood a lot of times as well and actually once I hit rock bottom with it which I've had I've had bulimia for five months for five years and um, when I was at my lowest point I got really sick and I ended up in the hospital and that made me realize that I actually need to take care of my body and I need to sort it out so I started opening up about it just in general, if it was just friends and family, and the more I spoke about it, the response I got was incredible. Like, so many girls on shoots would come up and they would start speaking about it. And I realized it's such a big problem and no one speaks about it. I think it it's so big that almost every girl has experienced that in the yes. business. Yes. I mean, there's so many <clears throat> forms of eating disorders. If And I think every girl, in a way, struggles with the relationship with food with because food, yes. you don't really understand it it's like for me it took me until I was 21 22 that I finally started understanding how to actually what being healthy means what do you think helped you to realize how to take care of yourself and how to be kind to yourself I think I just started looking deeper into why I have this issue and um, I just realized I was being alone a lot and I cared so much about what other people thought that I when I look back on old photos on my phone I realized that oh my god I actually looked great back then <laughs> yeah. why did I not enjoy myself why did I not have a better time and I just realized I wasted so much time just caring about what other people think have you ever seen the counselor I I have but I think it's it was really tricky when you're a model because they just wouldn't understand how someone that you know I was, you know, shooting great campaigns yeah. at the time and like on photos I looked happy, they just didn't understand why I would even have that issue. Yeah, it's, it's true, it's hard to explain to someone who has no idea what the fashion industry is about. Exactly, and for me it was also, it wasn't, I, 
didn't have an eating disorder because I wanted to lose weight or I wanted to look a certain way. It was just, it happened out of loneliness, sadness, and trying to figure out who I am. I didn't understand my body. So it became almost like a war with myself. It's like, it's almost like you're trying to substitute exactly some moments of happiness with food. Exactly. Like yeah, I remember I went being the in, same phase. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're in hotel rooms alone so much which yeah. people don't see how much time you spend on your own yeah and then you have instagram where you see people going out and you see your friends having fun and doing things and then you're all alone in a hotel room and you have to wake up in the morning look great jump around and a lot of times it's like in a bikini or in lingerie where you know if you've had a long flight or if you've had a bad night before you might be bloated yeah. and you come on set and people look at you and they judge you so it's like yeah, absolutely it's constantly personal I think it felt like it was always it felt always personal yeah it's very hard to not take it personally it's yeah. true like I'm, I've always tried to tell this to myself that it's you are not a problem like yeah. you're beautiful it's just you can't you can't make everyone happy exactly like some clients gonna love you some are not which is normal like every client is looking for a different different type of a, of a girl yeah of a model so but it's it takes time to it takes time to understand. to understand yeah and I have to say the moment I did understand it I think it was a mix of just I just woke up one day and I was like, I really don't want to care about what people think. I just want <laughs> to live my life and just be happy. And for some weird reason, it just clicked. And at that age also, I stopped overly working out. I mean, you just see people working out all the time. And it's like, I don't think it's necessary. You know, not every girl has to work out every single day. For me, it was, for example, eating healthy and working out three times a week was way more effective than working out two hours a day every day just to... Because I thought that's what you have to do. Yeah, you you have to listen to what your body yes, tells you. Yes, you listen to your body. Yeah. But I know that one of your dream jobs was always Victoria's Secret yes. show. And you tried very hard and you achieved it. And that's amazing. I remember I was so happy for you when I <laughs> saw that you've got the show. And I know how hard you have worked for it for years, basically. And how did it feel to finally be there and do it? It was the best feeling of my life especially because it happened after I went through this period of my whole eating issues because I started working for Victoria's Secret when I was 18 which was back in time back in the day was just very young and I felt so much pressure because you get so much attention and suddenly everyone expects you to look like a Victoria's Secret model, which whatever that looks like... It's a very day, high standard. Yeah, yeah, it is a very high standard. And it's it's also, it's a lifestyle. If you want to work for them, you have to have a healthy lifestyle. You have to work out. There's not a lot of time for going out and, you know, being wild and young. You have to be conscious about what you look like because you're representing a huge company. So... Back then, that was a lot of pressure, and that's why the first three... I think I actually went four times to the VS casting. I didn't get it, because wow. it was just... I just... I went through all my ups and downs, not knowing who I am, not knowing how to treat my body, and not. I didn't know how to probably prepare for it. So when the castings came, I feel like I just wasn't ready, and they knew it as well. Yeah. And then also you walk into a room and it's, I mean, you know, it's the most so intimidating room yeah. on the planet. Yeah. But I remember when I went through that phase where I was like, I just don't care anymore. Like, I just want to be myself. They either like me for who I am or they don't. And then I walked in and I got the show. Yeah. And I was like, wow, all these years of me thinking I have to do certain things or I have to look a certain way actually didn't do me any good. Yeah, I guess it just need to feel confident exactly and yeah. I also think it's a lot about timing too yeah everything comes at the right time to exactly it's true so you just need to relax and let it go sometimes exactly which is hard but um do you like Victoria's Secret has created a certain look of a perfect woman yeah. which ev everybody wants to look like but do you think it creates an unhealthy body image for women um, I definitely think it's not the perfect body. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think all of the girls work really, really hard to get to that state. 
and to get that kind of body but um I don't think it should be an example to what every woman should look like and I definitely I definitely think it's good that they're trying to include more body shapes now yeah I hope it's not too late but um I think there's so many amazing body shapes and it's also a time where there's a lot of change happening and I think there could be a lot more change that should happen but um yeah it's like it's always I remember I remember it as well but I think that's such a hard question I just think there isn't one perfect body I think there's so many different shapes and there should be there should be a place for every woman to feel perfect you know and I yes. think there's a lot of other brands that were a lot stronger on that than Victoria's Secret and they're they're all trying to Has Rihanna said Rihanna's Fenty show? Oh, Rihanna's Fenty show is incredible. I mean, she had all these, not just different shapes, she had all these amazing women with different backstories walk. And I think it's just a time where people are tired of just seeing one thing and people want to see... To be inclusive. Yeah, they want yeah. to feel included. And I think not everyone can work out to that extent and not everyone has the time to get to that shape and, and you don't have to yeah and honestly. you don't have to honestly yeah. you should feel comfortable the way you are and I think it's very important and that that's why there is so much change happening yeah I think it's totally fine if you if you feel like you you need to work out a lot and it makes you feel good and yeah it makes it makes you feel good with your body to be skinny or fit or If you feel like you want to be more curvy, that's fine. Like any shape is acceptable. It just yes. it's your personal feeling, and it's all good. Exactly, I agree. I mean, I was saying it too. It's um, it's funny because the time we're in now, I feel like there's so much aggression and there's so much negativity around it. Where I think people try to put one body down to hype up another, and suddenly it's like every skinny girl is a bad girl, and you know, yeah, you, where it's like. <laughs> we should in order to all feel the same we should all treat each other the same and then we should start not talking about what's right and what's wrong we should just all accept each other the way we are and these are beautiful things you're saying i totally agree like you we shouldn't hate on each other no. it doesn't matter how you look like it's good to talk about it. it's good to you know explain or express how you feel i just also think we shouldn't speak about it in a way where you just highlight one body shape or you highlight diversities only if you look completely different to yeah. what we've seen before because it's also not fair to exactly. all the to exclude other the, yeah, yeah, you, exclude yeah other I think girls. no one should be excluded so it's just a very aggressive time and I wish people would calm down and just try to all accept each other which is hard and it's gonna take a long time but yeah, it's gonna take a while But it's good that we're getting there and we have these conversations. Exactly. And finally, we can talk about these things. Yeah, I mean, we were saying before the interview even like that now that there's Instagram around, which is like the good thing about Instagram is that we can actually talk about all these things because yeah. for so long there was no proper outlet. If you weren't going to a proper interview anywhere, there was nowhere where you could speak about how you feel or Yeah, Even, now you doesn't you yeah. don't need to be interviewed anymore to no. express yourself. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's great. And yes, yeah, as you said, it completely changed the industry. I don't know to better or to worse in some at some extent, but it has changed. I feel it. like it's a huge transition time right now and there will be a huge explosion at some point and, and then hopefully it will clear things up and there will be a new time and a new era. Do you think that podcasts are going to be the next big thing instead of Instagram? Um, well, I've been actually hearing a lot about podcasts and I never thought I wanted to start a podcast, but YouTube just didn't feel right for me personally because I I just feel like there's so much time that I spend in front of the camera taking photos and videos. And for me, the things that I wanted to highlight are very personal, so I didn't want to distract with an image or with the way people look and for me it was important to speak about very the deeper and darker sides of not just modeling but just being a young girl growing up in the world that we live in now because I think there's so much pressure from social media and 
I have so many of my friends that buy all these little self-help books. And when we read it, it's all written by older women. And I think there's not a lot of, um, not a lot of platforms where you can actually relate to other girls that are at your age, what they're going through. And I think so that podcast, I just want to have a platform for young girls to maybe relate to some experiences and maybe you can help them do things different or better or, do you think you are going to have guys on it too, speaking about their problems? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's not, obviously, I don't want it to be just for girls, but I just think there's some things that girls might relate to more. But yeah, obviously. I obviously want it to be for everyone that's just young, and I think guys should hear it too. I mean, if guys would yeah. listen more to these things, like, no, it I would help them in guys, relationships there, There's too. so much stigma around guys as well, how yeah. they're supposed to behave and be masculine and... They, they can really share about lots of problems. It's just exactly. not, it's not, an, in many cultures, it's not acceptable for a guy to say that he wants to, I don't know, cry or mm-hmm. he doesn't feel well. And I think we should speak about that too. Oh, I agree. I mean, this whole Me Too movement, I think it scared a lot of men. <laughs> yes. And I think also, I mean, I think we're all feminists, but at the same time, I think it's important to not put every man down. Yeah, we're not men haters. We're scaring them away completely yeah. when you. It's just that, that's also not really the point. Yes, absolutely. Like you want to get respect, but I think for respect you need to respect each other. Yeah, not all guys are bad. No, 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 no I agree. There's so many good guys out there, and it's. I mean, a lot of times, I don't know, I feel like when you're single and you're out, it's always the good guy that's too scared to come up to you, so you don't <laughs> want to completely scare them away. Like, Yes, yes, I guess. You just have to be nice and... Exactly. And be a gentleman. Right? Exactly. Be a yes. gentleman. That's all you need to do. <laughs> so I know now that you moved from New York to London. Yes. Do you like it? I love it. Um, I still go to New York a lot, so I have quite a good balance, but... Um, being a model for 10 years and my whole focus was always my career and once I've achieved my personal goal which was Victoria's Secret I just decided to take some me time and I met an amazing guy and um, we've been together for two years now and he changed my life because I just feel like I have a more stable home aside from this crazy modeling madness so moving to London seemed like the right thing for me because it's a bit more quiet but it's still very metropolitan and it's very easy to get around yes and I just feel like I can focus more on myself and that's I can focus on a podcast or just things outside of the modeling world as well yeah do you feel like having relationship helped you with your health with your mental health and your body image definitely I think <clears throat> living in New York is very intense because it is I think the main model city there's models everywhere and there's there's so many bad guys there as well that yeah. just take advantage or they just want to date a model so it's really hard to find stability and yes. find self-worth in a city like that where you're constantly being compared to other girls um and yeah just for mental health i think it's so important to have something that grounds you to have something real and something with substance at home something not artificial exactly like a place where you can run around in sweatpants and people will still love you no matter what you do what you look like (laughs) i hope your boyfriend listens to this and watches this interview (laughs) you're saying nice that it says a lot about him too that he accepts you the way you are yeah, it, it was very good because he knows my industry, but he's not in it. So it helps me to, we can go to events together and then we can go home together and talk about it and be like, haha, can you believe this? And like at the same time, <laughs> we're both in our sweatpants watching Netflix. So oh, amazing. <laughs> you were one of the girls on that reality TV show Model Squad. Can you can you speak a little bit about it? How, how was that experience? It was a crazy experience. We None of us have ever done reality TV before. So going on a show like that was definitely very scary. But um, I mean, I was lucky that I got to do it with two or three of my best friends, actually, because Hannah, Devin, Shanina and I, we were all friends before. But um, 
I think we just try to give people an in into the model world and it just definitely, I feel like it wasn't what we all thought it would be. It was very emotional. It was, it was quite like a tough experience because you just have so many cameras around you 24 seven, everything you say is being recorded. It was definitely, it was definitely a crazy experience and I'm glad I've done it because it was <laughs> fun and it, I mean, it brought me and my friends a lot closer, but I would definitely, it's not my thing and I don't think I could ever do so reality TV again. The, the idea of the show was to just follow you around, like group of models, all successful and yeah. quite well known and they just followed around you know, followed you around just to see what, what it's like to be a model, right? Exactly. We wanted to show people what it's like behind the scenes. Um, we all didn't know that it was really hard to get permission for most shoots that we've done or fashion weeks that we where we've walked in shows. It was very hard to get permission to film everywhere. So we would have loved to have shown a lot more. But um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, we just had to show a lot more of our personality, which none of us expected. And filming hours on end, it was very, very emotional. <laughs> But do you think you, in the end, you you turned, you you showed the real, the genuine side of modeling of, of that world? Um, I think, in some ways, yes, and in some ways, which it was all. I mean, it wasn't scripted; it was all real. Um, but I think. It's very hard to show all the dark moments because that's when you don't always have the camera around you. Mm. But um, I think it was like a good little sneak peek and it was a fun experience. Yeah, I guess the, everyone who watched it had, could have a feel of it. Exactly. It's like a little bit of like a little sneak peek. <laughs> Maybe next, <laughs> one should, yeah. next one should be filmed in the model apartment. That would oh be the god, real yes. deal. <laughs> oh my god, that would have been incredible. Yes. And um, I'm I'm so happy that now you are doing your podcast. You are concentrating on other things rather than modeling. And but I know that you still enjoy doing modeling as well. And I guess I want I want to ask you what is your advice to the young people who are just starting out their path in the fashion industry. Um, I think my advice to them is first of all, don't rush it. I think it's a lot of girls get into modeling when they're really, really young. And I think it's just, it's not as easy as you think it would be. So I think it's good to wait until you feel ready. Also, never take anything personal, I would say, because a lot of times a client has a certain vision of what they want and you either fit it in that moment or you don't. So I wouldn't take it too personal. And make sure you're just always nice to everyone. And stay true to yourself. That's that's all beautiful things. And thank you so much for sharing today. And I'm always happy to see you. Thank you for having me. The things you have said, they're all amazing and helpful to a lot of young people. And I can't wait to hear your podcast. I know. I hope I'll have you on. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Nadine. Thank you.